Welcome back to Cord Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of cord cutting, including today, YouTube TV is bringing back its improved picture quality, not only for 1080p now, but also its 720p streams. We'll tell you why that's very important. YouTube TV is also asking you, what do you want to see improved in it? It's specifically looking at how it can make sports better. We'll tell you how you can give your feedback and some of the key requests people are making. Also, Amazon's been testing very successfully its new internet service from space. Two satellites last year were launched, successfully tested. Now they're about to destroy those satellites. We'll tell you why and why this is an important final step in their testing. These stories and a whole lot more coming up here in a quick second. If you want to learn more about them, check out the show notes and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. If you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow and hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of TV and still watch the show so you enjoy. Let's start off with YouTube TV. So YouTube TV a few months ago started to roll out what they call it enhanced 1080p. We talked about this because it's come and gone. Improved bit rates or better smoothness, especially with sports and other areas. Now, it went rolled out, they found a glitch, they rolled it back. They slowly been rolling out over the last few weeks. It now seems to be fully out, but there's a big improvement change here too. With this, not only is 1080p looking better, but 720p. That's very important because, um, sorry, apparently I didn't understand what I was saying. 720p includes the ability here um, for most broadcasts. A lot of television broadcasting, even sports, is only in 720p, not the full 1080p. So this enhancement with better bit rate and better smooth picture will make a big difference on more programs now that it doesn't need the 720p. Now, YouTube TV has used some AI upscaling and other things to make 720p's into 1080p streams before, but not on everything, and now this will be available there. So really cool, I'd love to see that feature. YouTube TV this week also reached out on Reddit, a YouTube TV um, team member on Reddit, posted the um, YouTube TV subreddit, which is dedicated to all things that. What improvements would you like to see for the sports um, improvement there? Now, in the first 13 hours from when we wrote this story, one of the main things here was multi-view. A lot of people wanted, for example, the ability to have one big multi-view window and then some smaller, or maybe picture in picture. The ability to pick which um, channels, not just sports channels or not just news channels, but pick which channels appear in your multi-view was a big part of that. Now with this though, there were other requests. Of course, some channels like seeing MLB Network be back uh, with that, uh, but the big ones came down to multi-view. So I have a question for you, question of the day. And of course, if you wanna leave a comment for them to see, um, in the story down below, there's a link to the Reddit post where you're gonna leave your comments so that Reddit will be monitoring that post or YouTube will be monitoring that Reddit post. But what changes would you like to see to YouTube TV? If you could have them make any changes, what would it be? Return of our sins, picture in picture, multi-view improvements? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, Amazon's working on building a wire, a, I should just say wireless, but a satellite-based high-speed internet service with speeds up to one gig. Now with this, Amazon successfully launched two satellites last year, did a ton of testing. Now they're preparing for mass production to roll out um, satellites to start testing in mass later this year. Now with this though, the two test satellites are about to be destroyed deliberately, brought into the Earth's atmosphere in a way that will burn them up, hopefully to eliminate debris and there won't be any. Amazon has committed that there'll be a zero debris from this basically, that's their goal. Um, to do that, they want to successfully test their re-entry. Amazon says within a year of the satellites ending its typical lifespan, these satellites have a limited lifespan due to um, all kinds of factors, but most notably just running out of fuel to maintain their positions, um, Amazon intends to deorbit them before they lose complete control of the satellites, burn them up in the atmosphere so nothing comes to Earth but nothing gets left in space to possibly damage other satellites. An, an increasing major issue as over the years, a little thing here, a little thing there has been left in space causing debris to fly all over the place. It's very interesting, there's many ideas how to address that debris, but Amazon says that they're going to deliberately destroy this, these satellites to ensure that their plan to do that safely will result in little, if any, debris left behind. 
All right, if you're a Google TV customer, you probably would love to have a Find My Remote. Many devices offer that, makes the remote make a chirping noise. The new Walmart on um, Google TV device Pro, the Pro version of their 4K model, it's a horrible name. Horrible name, I don't think I'll ever get it right. Has this feature, but Google TV now in the newest Android TV 14 with Google TV version, is now including built-in software to natively have a button on a new Google TV device that when you press it, makes the remote chirp a noise, helping you find it. If you're like me with two children, the TV remote suddenly often seems to be just vanished. And you find it in some of the most weird spots, toy chests, hiding inside toys, under couches, all kinds of places you can think of, we found the remote. This will make finding that a lot easier and now will be native. No longer will be like a third party software on the device from a builder to do it. Now with this, it's being designed to be done from the physical Android TV or Google TV device, not from the Find My Phone app, for example, on your mobile wireless device. But you press a button, it'll make the remote do a little chirping. All right, let's keep moving along. Anybody remember Toonami, Cartoon Network's block of afternoon cartoons back in the day? Now Toonami died, moved to Saturday, eventually died came back successfully on Saturday nights. And now Toonami will be launching classic Toonami, or Toonami Rewind, you can call it, that will allow you to watch classic Toonami programming with classic Toonami uh, bumpers from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. This will, at Eastern, this will include Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, Kai, K-I-A, Naruto, and other programs will probably be added through this, including some of the original uh, bumpers for these to help kind of bring back a nostalgic um, feel to it. Now look for this to continue to become more popular. Now interestingly, this Toonami af late afternoon block, we'll call it, is running under the Adult Swim banner. So Adult Swim now technically moves up to 5 p.m. I've talked about this before, but fewer and fewer kids are watching networks like Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney Channel. Instead, increasingly, it's becoming an older audience, especially in Cartoon Network, the 18 plus. And it seems that um, that the team over at Cartoon Network and Adult Swim are hoping that they will be able to attract all those people getting off of work who maybe grew up watching Toonami in the 90s and early 2000s, people who um, loved it and maybe want to come back and enjoy some classic shows they watched when they're younger. You can't ever quite count out the nostalgic value on this and maybe attract some new. The flip side of here is, notice they use that they said they're going to reuse a lot of old content. This is probably fairly cheap for them, right? Yeah, they're getting the rights to the TV shows, but all these bumpers and different things are probably already generated. Uh, they're just re-airing them, allowing them to save some money. It's also going to be a different um, uh, dub version in English than the original. I think a lot of people will be excited about that. But let me know if you are, remember Toonami fondly, if you are excited about the Rewind that's launching here very soon. That'll include classic Toonami programs. All right, we have a full breakdown. Core Cutting 2.0 is a growing movement in the United States. This is the idea that in 1.0, I canceled my TV service from Comcast, Spectrum, or other cable TV providers. In 2.0, I'm canceling their internet and going to other internet services. We have a full breakdown of everything that's happening with that, giving you kind of a inside look at Corcoin 2.0 and everything you need to know to understand what Corcoin 2.0 is. I'll put a link to that story in the show notes and in the first pen comment if you want to find out more. It's a very interesting dive into it. Deal of the day or new upgrade of the day. We have a full review of the new Roku Remote Pro, the second generation Pro Remote. If you're interested in upgrading your old Roku TV or your old streaming player with the new voice remote, we have a full breakdown, things like backlit, programmable buttons, and more are all there. Full details over at corecarsnews.com. Link in the show notes about the new Roku. And lastly, if you're a Fubo subscriber, good news. Fubo and Diamond Sports Group, the parent company behind Bally Sports, has announced a multi-deal, a multi-year renewal deal that will keep Bally Sports on Fubo. Now, Bally Sports will begin renamed after the MLB season. Um, Bally's, the casino group, paid for the naming rights. That's coming to an end and they are not renewing it. Their current contract will end after the current Major League Baseball. Unknown what the new channels will be called, but it won't be called Bally Sports going forward. Could be possibly named a wide range of things. It could find a new uh, sponsor to help cover it. Or they could just go and make up their own name. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Link in the show notes if you want to find out more. They did not disclose financial terms of the new deal. 
All right. Uh, typically, I'll answer a question, but I got a lot happening today. If you have a question, leave me a comment. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, um, all you have to do is say a question for Luke. I answered several questions in the comments last night. So if you have a question, sometimes I answer them in the comments. Sometimes I answer them here in the videos. Leave me a question about cord cutting. I'd love to do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for all of you for your support. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video.